So we're live. We're live. This is hammered out. And this is the special Ocean Dance Art Edition. Where am I? And if that terrified you, <laughs> Ocean's welcome fault. to Hammered Out. Uh, this is that was weird, but <laughs> Ocean's here idea, we are. not mine. Uh, it is. <laughs> It is Thursday for me, Thor's Day for Ocean, and I have a limp hammer. He does. Uh, However, mine is perfectly functional, but not quite as big. So, (laughs) hey, hey, this is the proof that you're a grower, not a shower. I know. Just just wait. I just gotta... (laughs) You know... (laughs) When a hammer loves a woman? Welcome to Hammered Out, Eric. I, I think we may have... Uh, successfully him. scarred you and traumatized you. Eric's like, I'm never fucking coming back to this fucking show. What the fuck is going on? Eric Murphy <laughs> is a uh, host of the ACA show Talk Heathen. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he has been doing How long have you been doing that show, man? You've been, you've been at that a, a minute. Yeah, I have. Ten uh, minutes, in fact. So I launched Talk Heathen back in 2017. 2017. Oh, so you launched Talk Heathen the same year that I launched my channel. Nice. Yeah, um, it was it was a blast, man. Um, I, I wound up having to uh, beg, borrow, and steal, but uh, here we are. So worked out well. <laughs> That's as you do. Speaking of begging, borrowing, and stealing, um, mm. <laughs> this is the part where I do the obligatory plugs. Um, so here's the oh, first plug. plugs. Yeah, here's the first <laughs> the first the first plug, which is not an innuendos for the uh, merch store. Uh, links for that are in the description. If you guys want to support, it's not the show. an innuendo. That's yet. a thing. Um, but if you want an innuendo, there is the, the sex shop, which I, I have a, a link uh, and an affiliate thing for if you guys want to do that. I'm only showing that for a second on screen so YouTube doesn't auto-demonetize me, because that's what it do. I don't know. It's all, we, we saw the corset. Uh, and maybe There's the affiliate was... link. <laughs> <laughs> There's it's not it's a it's a regular link with an affiliate code rather. So you click the link and then we you put in the code. code. It dr- it gives you ten percent off and that that allows me to actually earn money on it as well. So I can live and eat and all that other fun stuff because YouTube demonetizes things. So yeah, that's a thing. Um, also, the obligatory uh, Patreon plug is there if you guys want to support the show. That's an option that you have. Uh, it lets you see episodes early. Uh, you get to see them as soon as production finishes, as opposed to uh, when they actually go live on YouTube, which usually gives you anywhere between three days to a week uh, early on episodes. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, what the hell are you doing? There's fewer viewers than I have subscribers. I assume one of you have at le- has at least subscribed by now. That said, there's all the obligatory plugs. I've done it. I finished. He did all the plugs. Nice. There were plugs, and there were plugs on which you can buy plugs. It's great. Actually, do they sell plugs? They do. They know. sell. They, they sell do? butt plugs, both regular butt plugs and ones that With, give like, you fuzzy tails. tails and stuff. Yes. Yeah, good, <laughs> good, fantastic. <laughs> so, so not, just not so going to say why I asked. <laughs> Just so you're aware, Eric. Just out of curiosity. That was the out of all the places that I have asked for affiliate sponsorship, that mm-hmm. is that sex shop was the first place that took me. And I'm like, you know what? I get called a degenerate atheist enough times already, so why not just own it? Honestly, the artwork that comes in for this show that <laughs> there is this this kind of uh uh sexy kawaii kind of vibe going about it anyway. I wouldn't expect it to be any other way. Uh, but what, what blows my mind is is the sexy stuff is kind of adorable too, which, which weirds me out just a little bit. I mean, in a good way, I'm not here to kink shame anything like that. You know, Ocean can put whatever whatever he wants in his butt. Um, I'm good with that. Yeah, you do you, man. I will. I will do so. Absolutely. With gusto. Those of you who have not explored uh, your prostate, uh, you, uh, you you're missing out. <laughs> just so just so everybody's aware I, sorry a horrible pun just popped in my head it's something about like prostating yourself before god or something like that but uh i can't i can't make it work um you gotta workshop that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there's there there's a there's a pun in there somewhere uh it's a catholic pun but i don't know i may have um, just uh just interrupted you with the paganism meme right then and there paganism Ooh. <laughs> for those <laughs> chat remember um, well, hey, everybody. Ocean the apostate. The apostate. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with God. 
<laughs> okay. So now that, that we've that it would so that you sent me that clip and I was just like I have to use that like eleven million times. Like that's <laughs> it's perfect. That's what it's that's what exists. Are you aware it's of what we're referring to, Eric? There is a a clip in Castlevania with a Catholic priest just going dropping a Bible or drop dumping a Bible. There's a science book. He's, dro- he's dropping a science dropping a science book and going paganism. <laughs> And, <laughs> and then when she's like, it's just science. I'm using it to heal people. That's all. It has nothing to do with any god. He just looks so incredulous. Nothing to do with god? Like, freaks out. <laughs> I've freaks seen the it. fuck out. I've seen this. This is, It has nothing to do with any god. Yes. Oh, yeah. It no. has n- yep. Yep. <laughs> I, actually, I, I just played the clip for the audience as well. To do with god. I'm, I'm, I'm watching it right now. Okay. Nothing yep. to do with god? It's... It is one of my favorite things because I ever since that I clipped those things. I said I'm going to start using these in episodes because right. they're perfect. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful little reaction thing, uh, and I had to I, I had to use them in the the thing where accusing environmentalists of being pagans is just like all right, well, all right. If anybody cares a little bit about the environment, you're a fucking pagan apparently. Um, but who knows? Whatever. All right. Cool. Oh my gosh, Neil the 604 Atheist is in the house. How's it going, Neil? Dude, it's Neil. Oh. Neil the 604 Atheist, he's been on this show before. He's a fantastic dude. Seriously. The, awesome. the fan art that was made of Neil scared me a little bit. <laughs> the fan art of him uh, shitting fire into a toilet? Yes, like literally blowing fire out of his butt and destroying the toilet. Like there was a lava thing, I think, that was going on there. That said, as it was magma. As usual, if fan art is submitted throughout the course of the show, uh, fan art will be plastered all over Eric's face. There's plenty of real estate around him as long as he's willing to like stay Wait, inside it. Yes. Yes, fan yes. art that as, is submitted throughout the show. As fan art is made by artists on the show, we will be putting it on the screen. As long as it is YouTube appropriate. Remember that, you perverts. That's, oh, a, th- that's so. a thing that we've been doing for months. <laughs> wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I'm all right we got we got a couple of people that are already starting so anyway <laughs> oh, okay uh, there it has begun so the thing is uh, something that i've been curious about uh that i'm sure the audience is curious about as well is yeah. how the fuck talk heathen came to be so you you have there's a there's a beg borrowing and stealing going on there and I know that there's a story so let's let's hear the story my friend there is and I don't know if I've workshopped a uh, a broadcast appropriate version of this story <laughs> you know what we uh, began with an advertisement for a sex shop showing yes. the toys on screen so use that as your bar um as many butt plugs are like you know you can include any butt plug that was in the story. Uh, in in I mean, the telling of it, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so no, no, yeah, this is only going out on YouTube where people will be able to see it and clip it. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, oh man. Okay. <laughs> so so it's a bit of a long one. So just kind of buckle up. Is it a long butt plug? Because those can cause rupturing. I hear. <laughs> okay. As an aside. <laughs> uh, so in about a week and a half i'm going to be going to arizona for my little sister's wedding and she works in a hospital that is well known uh for dealing with uh, gastrointestinal stuff Ooh. and so she was like oh yeah yeah that's what i do and i was just like you get people with stuff stuck in their butts don't you he's like yeah yeah <laughs> this guy <laughs> that guy came in with a potato this guy with a cucumber this girl came in with a hamster for some reason well, well this guy I, came in with a light bulb or his colon had a really great idea we're not quite sure yet none of those would be surprising <laughs> <laughs> especially was, considering that everything i just named is a kink <laughs> right what was the most surprising she told me buzz lightyear somebody had a buzz lightyear <laughs> toy shoved up their butt mm-hmm Oh and boy! The emergency room because the wings deployed. The wings deployed. Wings deployed, and he couldn't like. I, I mean, get him back in. I guess or it's just, there, there's a two hundred and fifty and beyond joke in there somewhere. Just so, so <laughs> Ocean. Just so, Ocean. Have you ever actually owned a Buzz Lightyear toy? No. Okay, so the wings have a trigger mechanism where if you don't pull them just tight enough, they can't lock back in place. 
So if he wasn't able to squeeze his button just the right way to lock the wings in place. There were too many double entendres there already, and now you're just going further. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, so anyway, Buzz preventing, it from go, preventing it from going further is the reason he needed doctors. Ooh, by the way, other than being an atheist, I'm one of those assholes that vapes. And, oh, you're that guy. That's we right. Get, we get it, bro. You vape. I know, right? Okay, so I cannot crossfit. I cannot go vegan. I cannot wear a fedora because I'm already, I already have enough shit going for me that I'll just kind of spiral <laughs> into explode. this, like, yeah, the singularity of douchiness. So I've got to, I've got to watch <laughs> what I do very carefully. Because, uh, because we do have a, a three-way conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. here uh, playing uh, any super chats that do come in, I'm going to be reading at the tail end of the show. So please remind me at the tail end of the show to go ahead and take care of super chats. Okay. I just want to get that out there now so that we know. Cheers. Groovy. So, uh, like, okay. So, so yeah. story of the show, story of the show. Um, so I'm no longer a, an employee of the atheist community of Austin, which okay. definitely, uh, absolves me of a lot of liability. <laughs> Cause I'm just some fucking guy. And now I'm a guy who's got the second biggest show. So <laughs> I, can, I can say shit. <laughs> um, so when I first got to the ACA, um, I, I, I mean, I, I really do mean it when I say on the show all the time that the community that we're building is what I am all about. Mm -hmm. And um, part of the reason why I'm so all about it is the very first time I went into the ACA, I cried. Like, I just bawled my eyes out. I was like, I'm finally home. And um, our Mark, our poor producer, had to like deal with my blubbering ass, you know, <laughs> just like it's okay, you know. Um, so I was like, okay, this is it. This is th this is where I'm going to be dedicating my time. And and I, you know, obviously wanted to be on the atheist experience because who the fuck wouldn't want to be on the atheist experience? And they're like, yeah, okay, that's cute. Good luck. Right. Um, turns out uh, they weren't open to bringing new people in. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I wanted to start my own show. I was going to start a podcast. Jamie and I were both call screeners. We were, we quickly became best friends. Uh, we decided we were going to start a podcast together. Um, and so we borrowed equipment from the audio engineer, uh, our audio engineer, Vern. And so I was living out in, out in the middle of nowhere with my family. We wound up putting blankets on the walls of this tiny little shack. I lived two miles down a dirt road from my own mailbox. And so I was out like, Jamie called it Operation Handwritten Manifesto uh, because he thought it was just so absurd that we were going out to a cabin in the woods in the middle of nowhere to record. Um, but we practiced. We practiced and practiced and practiced. And um, eventually, um, you know, we had to take turns doing call screening for the atheist experience. And so I got bored and uh, there was nobody who was greeting people. People would just kind of wander in and sit down, watch the show and walk out. And I decided, okay, you know what? I'm just, I'm gonna do a little show, you know, a little song and dance, kind of, you know, welcome to the ACA. Here's all this info, yada, yada, yada. Here's how you can donate. Here's what the ACA is all about. You know, let's hear it for the hosts and, and, and cheering and all that. And, um, that kind of took off. Um, so I had started doing that for a few months when uh, one night after uh, the atheist experience, we were at Star of India and Mark and Vern, the our producer and audio engineer respectively, were sitting with Jamie and I because the table, anyway, we were at our own little table because we got pushed out. <laughs> and um, mm. they said, you know, you guys, if you ever wanted to start your own show, uh, we would be, and I was just like, yes, 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 we want to do that. And Jamie, yeah, absolutely. Um, they started that conversation then? And there was just, started it was that like, yeah. Sweet. Said, if you ever want to do your own thing, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So uh, originally we were going to do the podcast. And uh, I remember I was so proud. Um, I, I had found the perfect name for the podcast, and actually I launched one episode of that podcast. It's called The Atheist Podcast because nobody took that name, and so I snapped up the URL. Um, How did nobody take that nobody name? Nobody yeah. took it. Everybody that I've talked to, I, 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 no illusions. Um, uh, Tom and Cecil from Cogdis, uh, you know, um, Phil Ferguson, and, and just, just going down the line, 
they're all sitting there like, oh yeah, I thought of the, the thinking atheist or the scathing atheist or cognitive dissonance or whatever. Yeah, no, the atheist podcast was not taken. Huh. Yeah, not only, not only that, but I bought, I bought atheistpodcast.com too because that was available. And I, that's a redirect to the atheistpodcast.com. So I was pretty stoked. All right. <laughs> um, so Jimmy and I were practicing. Uh, we would go in and for several months, we would just practice and practice and practice and practice. And we would try and arrange for calls. And mind you, people really didn't know about it. You see, at the time, there was not very much, there wasn't a lot of openness to new shows. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a thing. In fact, when I went to the board and asked them specifically at a meeting, there was one person uh, who looked up and said, what makes you think we want more shows? Wow. Okay. What, uh, can I take what is diversity for 400, please? <laughs> I, I, you know what? Right? You would think I ethnically ambiguous, <laughs> right? Yeah. For a reason. I'm, 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 I have some white in me, but not entirely. <laughs> not even half. Um, but anyway, yeah. So Mark, the producer, was just like, ah, fuck it. Let's do it anyway. And so we waited until after a board meeting. Um, oh, right. Wait. Sorry. Back up just a little bit. We were practicing for the podcast. And then Mark said, you know, if it's done at the ACA, it's going to be owned by the ACA. And I was like, never mind. We're not going to do my podcast here. <laughs> um, we need to find something else. Burn pops in and goes, you know, we have a several thousand dollar uh, voice over IP phone system switch and all of that. There's a reason why there aren't call-in shows elsewhere because it's fucking expensive up front. Right. If you're not using this call-in system, you're an idiot. Um, so at first I thought, okay, well, I don't want to rip off the atheist experience. Uh, so what am I going to do? And so we, Jimmy and I kind of workshopped it and we came up with Talk Heathen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember... You know I have opinions on that name. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you know, what's funny is... is um, uh, is I, we were just spitballing names, and I said talk, mm. and Mark goes talk heathen to me, and everybody went. Yeah, there we Ooh. go. Okay, yeah, that's got to be it. <laughs> um, hey, you know I love you, man. No, 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 it's a good, it's a good name though. It is. And uh, who is it that started doing, uh, referring to atheists as heathens, um, like self-identifying that? I think that was. Well. So- uh, is that a Sam Harris thing, or is that somebody else? Well, in King James, it says to take your slaves from the heathens among you. Yeah, but those are pagans. So, <laughs> <laughs> also, it, for also, just so you know, two two artworks have already been submitted. The first one is is currently playing over your face. <laughs> oh, that's amazing! Look at that. <laughs> the thing is, some people walk out of here with avatars, and that's that's one of those that looks like one man. Oh yeah, no, I'm uh, super stoked about this. I'm really yes. thank you for fan art. You've also got this one. I can art with Eric Ocean and Cirrus. <laughs> it's got little stick figures. <laughs> yes, love it. That is beautiful. Welcome, um, welcome to, welcome to the show, Eric. <laughs> dig it. Uh, so yeah, we we started talk heathen, but. Really, it was like, okay, it's going to be a matter of time before we're in trouble. Um, and we, you know, well, I hustled my ass off. Um, right. And within a month, the show, the, the channel was monetized and was bringing in revenue. And so a month later at the board meeting, I remember I sat there and I, I said, hey, okay, here it is. It's making money for the ACA no strings attached. I bought the URL. I made the website. Um, we're not, you were not utilizing anything more than the electricity that it's going to cost to run it. And I'm begging you to take this. So they said, okay. Um, but kind of everywhere along the way, there were times when it was just kind of ask for forgiveness, not for permission, because you're not necessarily going to get the okay until you, give the proof of concept and right so, um so you had like basically you did you uh kind of forced a, a pitch process almost and made it possible for other shows afterwards 
as well, oh, right? Yeah. Is that, like as because you did that and proved that it was a working model, right? Well, <laughs> essentially, okay. is that I mean, uh, so in a very nice way, um, what I wound up doing after that is I had contacted American atheists, and I was just like, "Hey, I'm uh, totally a representative of the ACA, and I'm allowed to call you." <laughs> <laughs> how would you like to have talk even in the atheist experience do live shows over there right and um at the time it was nick fish who is now the president but he wasn't the president back then and he's just like you can you can get the atheist experience out here i was like yeah yeah totes the goats yeah yeah the atheist experience <laughs> and talk heathen and he's just like I can't, he, he, he's like, okay, uh, yeah, the atheist experience live on the main stage of American Atheist Convention. Right. And I was like, look, atheist experience and talk heathen, they, they go together. You have to do two of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There it is. You You're going to accept the deal. You need to accept both. And right. he's like, oh, okay. Um, that's why three months in, to no four months into having a brand new show we had a live show on the main stage of the american atheist convention mm -hmm. uh, which was just unbelievably cool i i fangirled so hard it was my very first convention my first convention i ever went to i did a live show on the main stage and um i fangirled so hard i lost my voice <laughs> <laughs> how loved, did that show go like was it a hands in the air um it was really, really good. And we were just flying by the seat of our pants. We, that, that, was, that had been it. You know, we're just going to do it. We're going to be authentic. We're going to bring it. And yeah. um, I remember it was about an hour before the show started. I was sitting next to uh, the, the scathing guys and No Illusions looks at me and he goes, so do you have all your stuff all planned and scripted? And I was like, no. He goes, you can go on in an hour. What are you going to do? Uh -huh. <laughs> they script everything he's like there's no way i would do that um but it wound up just being a ton of fun i learned not to yell into a microphone um, but, hey guys yeah yeah um <laughs> and and we, we we did that we got back and there was just this energy around the aca and yeah that's that was when there was an election jamie was elected and um, there was this big push and it was just like, okay, no, we really do need to listen to this. Um, there is an ethical, there is a moral piece to this. And that is that if you have this platform and you're not using it to do as much fucking good as possible, right? you're fucking up. You yeah. should be using this platform to elevate the voices of people who wouldn't otherwise be heard, who need to be heard. You know, it, you do as much good as possible with what you have. Otherwise, it's a waste. And we took that seriously. And that's, yeah, that's that's why we got all the other shows. The the So Talk Heathen was like, kind of opened the door for a lot of the other shows that mm -hmm. are had. Like, did those pitch processes wind up going similarly? Or did like the ACA start actively looking for more shows at that point? Uh, so Mark, our producer, uh, said hey i want to have 10 shows by the end of the year oh, okay and he went he went when, they went from why would we why would we, why would we want shows. more shows to let's do 10 within a year yeah <laughs> that's that's a that's big expansion i wonder if it's right. it's almost and forgive my sarcasm but it is almost as if having a variety of shows prevents uh burnout and therefore is incredibly useful but you well, know it's just you know, the, the, the interesting thing is you need the talent. Um, and getting good talent is incredibly difficult. And you need the work ethic. You can be right. good and not have the work ethic. And um, I, I am a firm believer that, you know, when I go into record, dude, there's a live fucking studio audience. There's an audio engineer, a producer, and a call screener who came in hours early to make sure that when you go on, you look and you sound good. The least you can do is take a fucking shower. You know, <laughs> put on some clothes, uh, iron your shirt, look like you deserve that because people are giving you their time and they don't have to, so earn it. 
See, right. you, you say that, but my time as a manager before I became a YouTuber has taught me that no matter how many times you say that, there's going to be at least the one guy that decides right. that he didn't need to have a shower uh, before he came in. And he ironically will be the guy in the middle that everybody can smell. <laughs> and, but, but the thing is, is we can say, you know, it, it's not working out. Right. Being in front of the camera is a privilege, not a right. Yeah. And there's no work restrictions. Everybody's volunteering. All of everything that goes in, all of the donations, it all seriously does go to charity. Um, so if you don't like it, fucking hit the bricks. You're a volunteer. Thank you for your service. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, we, we, we did our best to do that. But yeah, that's, that's kind of in a nutshell, the story of Talk Even. And so like I, I had... Um, I think I've expressed this to you before that like when because you're you described the experience of like walking into the ACA the first time and having like this feeling of home and uh, when I went there like I had an expectation almost because I was like I'd seen the shows and the shows some a lot of times they put forward like this debatey appearance. Ooh, you and, thought we're all going to be neckbeards. Yeah, huh? I thought I thought it was going to be like, all right, <clears throat> Ocean, strap yourself in. This is going to be a ride. And yeah. I came in and everybody was extremely welcoming and extremely uh, open. And there were people there that I met that without the ACA would not have a sense of community. That have, was, was expressed to me several times by people that I met there um, just over and over. Just like I just without without this place, I wouldn't know where I would be or where I would be able to find like a network and a social network and a support network. And uh that's that was like when i saw that and saw like kind of um the effect that it was having on these people it was like this is worth this is i understand why people are excited about this organization now yeah um it, so, well, and you you've you've had you've, you've had some experiences with that i guess with like just the more people having that experience with the aca right this like because i i just got it got that sense and I was there for a few days. Um, and I, what I thought was really interesting is that most of the shows are done um, like on the weekend. But then when you're, when you're there on like weekdays or whatever, there's still that sense of community. Even when there's no show going on. Oh yeah. They're D and D nights. Uh, there's yeah, yeah. the under the influence on Wednesdays. Um, there's tons of different groups and things, book clubs and, it's this teeny, teeny, tiny building with these two t tiny, tiny rooms. I mean, really, the fact that we get everything done in that tiny little, little amount of space is just unbelievable. Um, if you were to probably call the fire marshal on any given weekend, it probably <laughs> would go well. Um, but we do the best with what we have, you know? So, but I'm saying we. I'm, I, I am representing myself. I'm not right. the ACA. I can't and I won't. Um, right, you're you are here as your own autonomous person. That's right, but, but you do have a show there, and this, yep. and you are like excited about them and supportive of them and all that. Oh my um, god, yes, yeah. no, seriously, it's like pretty obvious that you are. <laughs> well, it, so so if you have five dollars for Patreon, that you're going to decide, you know, how to spend that five dollars. I would say five dollars to the ACA. Right. And that's to somebody who has a Patreon himself who's trying to make a living. Like, yeah. it is that important and it is that useful. And so, the, as in addition, like, you've the show that you've done has like that call in format of you, 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 you get it's a surprise. You get curveballs like all the fucking time, right? <laughs> yeah. So, there's, there's, there's got to be some war stories in there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yes. Um, so the first one that really, really blew me was um, Darth Dawkins. We have I've had, experience we've had with him. We have experience with him. Yeah. yeah. When, is, Darth, when Darth Dawkins. <laughs> <laughs> this is how in, I feel when that happens. <laughs> right. When, when Darth called in the very first time, um, it really surprised me. It was the first time I ever yelled on the show. Mm. And it was the very first time, first person I ever hung up on. Yeah. And, um, the next. Day, what made you? What made you hang up on him? Um, it was no longer honest discourse. It was outrage. It was. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you how outraged I am because I think you're so rude. Instead of 
talking about it. Right. And honestly, I had not wrestled enough with the subject matter to really understand. And so I was really pissed at myself because I thought, you know what, Eric, you should have done better. And so right. for three months, I fucking studied. I went to the university. I found professors. I found people in philosophy to talk to and run through about it. And I prepared and I was like, who the hell is this guy? I found him online and I watched hours and hours of video. And so I was Does he, there. Like, this is just so that uh, it's, it's pretty easy to find a lot of video of the, this particular person, uh, Darth Dawkins. There's channels devoted to um, engagements that he's been in, he's been in that have gone well and, age, and engagements that he's been in that have gone terribly for him. Um, so, you know, it's, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want you to come off like, I became obsessed with this guy, uh, but no, maybe no, he did. I don't know. It's <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. No. Um, so I, to, to also be fair, it, the, your reaction to the first time you had a conversation with Darth Dawkins, fairly similar to my first interaction with Darth Dawkins. Yeah. I wound up yelling at him. Um, I, I never got a chance to yell at him because the first time that I interacted with him personally was on the Blue Politics server. Uh, oh, where, where he's, he's got, got all the controls. Yeah, yeah, where he's got his own little like when he gets when he's done in one channel screaming at somebody, he runs to his own little safe room and hides. Uh, where he also argues against safe spaces while maintaining his own. There was a <laughs> uh, at, at the point in time when Darth Dawkins would engage on platforms that he didn't have moderation control on. Uh, it became in the debate community kind of like the the act the killing a lion. <laughs> if you got into a debate with Darth Dawkins and got him to yell at you or rage quit the conversation. Um, and there became, it became known that there's like, uh, you probably bumped into this, that there's like a series of questions that if you ask him, he freaks the fuck out. I, like yeah. he can't handle like asking about. Uh, but, but then I, d I didn't want to go down that route. I wanted, right, right. I wanted to forge my own path. And yeah. so um, kind of a peek behind the curtain. This wasn't something that's abnormal. Um, I watch every single show meticulously several times at, mm -hmm. each week. You know, what did I do wrong? What did I fuck up? And I tear myself to ribbons um, right. I'm to find a negative comment that I haven't agreed with um, on any of the videos. Can I do read the, the, the comments? Um, chalk it up to my depression. I don't know. But it helps me. I've been able to get through a lot of my stuttering and nervous laughter and shitty jokes and run ons and things like that. And, and, and focus down and so when i saw that challenge with that with darth dawkins it was a challenge that i was like no i'm gonna get better from this right and so i was like i got locked and loaded and it took a year for him to call back and a year later when he called back you were like i'm, I'm ready, ready. <laughs> uh -oh. it's time i was ready and i was just like, okay <laughs> here's the deal yeah i don't need to get mad i don't need to give this person my platform Right. They can either engage in this way or they can fuck off. But right. They do not get to come in and run my show. And and I think if he, with Darth Hawkins in particular, and if you probably you run into this a lot with the, the call in shows, people that try to play a psychological game with you. Like oh, yeah. they want to, they want to try and railroad you. And Darth Hawkins does that. He's, he's 10% argumentation with presuppositionalism, 90% psychological argumentation. He tries to get under your skin. Yeah, but if you call them out on it, I, I mean, really, if anything, what I've learned is from doing live shows, be honest. When you screw up, immediately say so. Um, if Even if your intent was different, the impact can be such that you should stand up and say, you know what, as a public figure, I don't get the luxury of trying to justify my actions after the fact. I can, I need to stand up and go, you know what, this is how it came across. I'm sorry. I'm going to be a better communicator next time. Um, and that is especially true with somebody like Darth Dawkins. Uh, when, when somebody calls in and they want to railroad you, you say, you know what, actually it looks like this is getting uh, railroaded. So we need to stop here because this conversation is getting driven by you. And that's not, you're talking at me. You're not talking to right. Him, not a, another, he doesn't. He doesn't like to. He'll he'll ask questions, that, but it'll be after about a ten minute diatribe. Sometimes that's the that is the uh, like honestly that's the presuppositionalist approach in most cases. Overtalk. It ends not just overtalk, but it's like let me apply the Socratic method for a few questions and then overtalk. Now that I think I've put you into a logical bind in a gotcha, and that seems to be the 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 mo in the game 
when it comes yeah. to precepts. Yeah, but when you how call, do you know that? How do you know that? Yeah, when, when you call my show, you can limit it to yes and no, and I need to explain a little more. But this is not your show, so fuck off. Mm -hmm. Right. And I I absolutely loved it. I I'm I'm ready for him to call back. Um, and I'm also is, that a, is that a challenge to Darth Dawkins? Call back oh, in to talk even. In Hello, is this evolution false? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, yeah, people like him uh, were were frustrating. People like Hamish. Do you remember Hamish? Hamish. Yeah. I actually, I'm, the the name rings a bell. We had this very conservative Irishman who would call in. Uh huh. Who just ah. Oh, it's it's beautiful. Did, I, would he did, run like Catholic pro life stuff or something like that, or like what was his what was his thing? Crazy. <laughs> just <laughs> you've got to watch some Hamish stuff. Okay. Um, it, it got to the point where there was a big push uh, from fans and all that. They said, "Hey, make Hamish go away. We don't want him anymore." And so really? the call is. Would he just like call in every week or something like that? Yeah, he yeah, wanted to call in every week. Okay. Um, but here's the thing. I'm a fan. <laughs> here's 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 what I'm a fan of. I love Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. I like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, huge Star Wars, huge huge Star Wars geek, um, and a number of other fictional universes I absolutely adore. And I'm going to go with Harry Potter for this example. I want to live in that world. I don't right. want to follow Harry. I want to go to Diagon Alley. I want to go to Gringotts and, and I, I want to go to Hogsmeade and I want to, you know, see a game of Quidditch and I, I want to live in that extended universe because it's amazing. And if somebody calls in and they think that lizard people rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, the reptoids argument. If If you really think... Like we had somebody, you know, we had flat earthers call in. We had somebody say that the pyramids were the original site of the Garden of Eden. I want to know how your universe works because this is an extended universe that I, I'm fascinated by. How, how, how does government work in this absolutely <laughs> wild, you know, uh, system where the, the entire world is being, you know, so there's typically you can tell how realistic one of those fabricated universes are by the mere fact that government works in them. Well, I, I mean, how many people are in on the conspiracy? You know, I, I remember jokingly, actually, the very first uh, atheist convention I went to, um, that, that American atheist convention, I went with uh, Russell Glasser. And I'm sitting there and I, I remember I'm, I, I looked at him and I was like, Russell, I'm, I'm in this, right? Like, <laughs> I'm pretty far in this. I'm, I, I've got a show. I'm with the ACA. I'm, I'm doing live shows. I'm, I'm now traveling. I'm, he goes, yeah, you're pretty fucking in this, Eric. I was like, when am I getting my check from the Illuminati? Like, What does George Soros cut me my take? Yeah, right. Did Becky in accounting just fuck up and not put me on the payroll? Like, <laughs> is, that's, is that's what I'm wondering when it comes to like pagan shit too, because that's you know the the Illuminati is always running like pagan rituals and shit like that, right? <laughs> like they're always sacrificing something to something to something, and I'm like, dude, this is I'm doing all this work for you guys. Can you just send me something in? Like, come on. <laughs> so when I did my video on a call for an uprising, which I'm going to be doing more videos on, I think because. Uh, Even though you're such a you're you're the big guy kick, picking on a little tiny channel there, sir. Yeah, the the little four hundred and twenty thousand subscriber channel. I'm the big guy. Yeah, yeah apparently you're the big guy. I'm the big dog it's, in that fight. You've according got to his this fans, larger platform than he does. Um, you need to but, calm that down, sir. But a good calling portion, a good portion of the comments from his fans on my video were controlled opposition, Illuminati shill, and I'm just like, I wish. I wish I was those things because it would mean that I could afford something other than ramen. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's where that that's where that puts me. Ramen oh, means I can afford chicken tendies every day. What the fuck? <laughs> chicken tendies. <laughs> you okay, Eric? I spent way too much time on that subreddit. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> so you guys are gonna need to explain this subreddit to me because I am I am I am not in on this joke. What is happening? Uh, 
so... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> now this is a story all about how your this, life's this, gonna get flipped turned upside down this isn't just a reddit that's devoted to delicious chicken tenders i guess no it's not it's, okay there's this caricature of the kind of pseudo incel um you know uh lives lives with mom and and, and gets angry and is absolutely justified in being horrible um you know, like peas in bottles and just leaves them around like that kind of some of the uh, some uh, of the jokes that you get from that subreddit are like me. Uh, another cookie won't hurt. Also me. And then it shows like the Breaking Bad uh, logo, but instead it's breaking benches and it just shows a, an obese person like that's the type of humor you get on our slash tendies. Yeah. And, and, and so that so those are good boys. What the fuck? Are, <laughs> but then there are also Chad's and Stacy's. Uh, you know, taken from that incel culture, mm-hmm. right? So you get a you get a fit guy, and uh, yeah, you'll have pictures of like people who mm-hmm. like turn their life around and and lost a bunch of weight and are super, and they're holding up like the big pants, and um, you know, it's like um, they 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 in in remembrance we lost another one. You know, it, it's, just, <laughs> it's real bad. Here's a uh, here's a in lovely... remembrance. Here's where your tendies come from, Ocean. I'm sending it to you in the Facebook chat, and I'm going to let everybody see it uh, oh, in no, our chat. This happening? is the type of stuff that you get on there. This is where oh, your tendies come from. What? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Facebook, I need to see this. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, really, honestly, save yourself some time. Don't go there. It's it's not great. If, if you want to if, if find weird... And amazing go to r slash i'm sorry john that is absolutely worth your time um, so, so is r slash i am very smart r slash i am very smart is one of my favorite ones r slash i'm sorry john is um a, a take on garfield where garfield is this demonic kind of elder god who is torturing john but that just sounds like standard Garfield to me. Amazing! It's One amazing, second, guys. Okay. Yeah, continue. Uh, I just gotta go. Ocean, you you just uh, you just swapped your yourself in Eric's place. Now Eric is the co-host of Hammered Out. Well then, <laughs> and the guest is Ocean. Oh shit! <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's Welcome where we to, are. Is there now. a way that we can? Uh, uh, I guess uh, Eric, if you want to tap the stop video. And the uh, stop video is not going to do it. Let's he'd ha- he'd have That's to, what happened he'd... to me. There we go. Up. There we yeah. are. Everybody's right. good now. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, I'd just like everybody to know that I've been performing surgery on a gummy bear this entire time. <laughs> As a result, the gummy bear now has a detachable head and two detachable sides. Now, why I did this to this gummy bear, I don't actually know. And uh, I couldn't explain how it happened. It's all kind of a blur. But I do know that we have Eric here, and this is the only time that I've actually performed surgery on a gummy bear on, on live camera. So I'm going to go ahead and assume it had something to do with you being here. Um, I, I feel so much safer. I don't know if that's the... <laughs> uh, I don't I'm know looking, if that's the word. <laughs> I'm looking at the live chat, and uh, so somebody posted, obviously has been there, I am eternal, John. <laughs> Uh, which is amazing, <laughs> um, but uh, we also had uh, someone who. Oh, it is way too gone. This live chat is active. You guys are amazing, um, but I know you. I, I know there are other things we we were going to talk about, but I just I completely forgot. I don't know. What's next? Uh, what's next is you should definitely see the artwork that was just submitted for you. Okay. Uh, this is coming in. This is a thing that happens to everybody on my channel. I just, I just hope you know. Okay. Am I going to see it on the Facebook or first? Or am no, I you're just... gonna, you're gonna see it on the live show. It's already this, there. This is just going out. <gasps> no. <laughs> you are now a Rule sixty three cat girl, Eric. It's happened. That's that's, that's my profile now. <laughs> That, that, that has to be my profile picture now. Thank you. You can't you can't avoid it and you can't escape it. This is where you uh, are. Thank this, thank Gaelic Knox for for giving you the boobs. Thank you, Gaelic Knox. Um, you know, honestly, 
I, I was wondering uh, where I was. I'm on that part of the internet right now. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> you for, you forgot. Oh, that's great. We are we are from. You're familiar with Logic, correct? Mm -hmm. So you're from the part of the internet where, as soon as I had a collaboration with Logic, it meant that I got tentacle porn in my inbox because I did a collaboration with Logic. Okay, I would <laughs> rather have that. I'll tell you what I get <laughs> because I talk about my mental health a lot. Um, I get messages from people in distress a lot. Um, and like, you don't reach out to somebody, you, you, you know, a com you don't reach out to a complete stranger because you're doing well. And so people will reach out to me in absolute crisis. And, um, it is rough, man. Mm -hmm. It is really rough. I would much rather get tentacle porn. I mean, I'm not asking for it, please. No, <laughs> I don't need to add that, but everybody in the chat, Eric has just requested tentacle uh, porn. Uh, no, please. No. And this is on the verge of him talking about people approaching him with a crisis, so he's actually in a crisis, and the answer is tentacle porn. <laughs> what? Look what? at the chat. Why do you hate Too me? late. <laughs> Here's the funny thing. It's probably, they're probably going to send him to ACA email. <laughs> that, and that, so um, I, I, I only Here get... Here you are. Oh, fuck me. All right. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, the um, yeah the anxiety and depression is something that I absolutely do want to talk about and try to talk about because um, there's way too much stigma around it and it should be addressed. We should not be afraid of it. Um, I am not my illness. And sometimes it feels like my illness is going to win, um, but uh, it's a fight. And, uh, You're not the only one. I've lost a career to it. I used to be a. Uh, I used to be a. I'm not sure if uh, you guys have quick trips in Texas. Um, I believe you do. Yes, you do. Um, so, Quick Trip is one of those places that, while it's a gas station, uh, it provides excellent care for its managers. Uh, starting level managers there get forty thousand a year, full health care benefits, like vacation pay, all kinds of stuff. Uh, that you wouldn't expect, but they give it. This episode is brought to you by Quick Trip. <laughs> um, but my career that I had with them, uh, while I was a manager and it was the first time I was ever financially stable in my life, um, I ended up losing that career to anxiety because I was working on the overnight shift, and it was from being on the overnight shift every day that I even learned that I had anxiety in the first place. Um, and that's where I even learned that I had depression because I had no idea why I randomly spiraled, but depression and anxiety have a lovely hand holding time as you're probably well aware. Oh yeah. It is. A, it, it, they feed each other for sure. Yes. Um, so luckily while I was there, I was able to get, uh, medication and a diagnosis and all that other fun stuff. Um, but on the downside, because I no longer work there, I no longer can afford said thing, so I have to manage it on my own. So when somebody comes to me talking about anxiety, depression, and things like that, I relate heavily because it's not just a thing that I wrestle with, it's a thing that has spiraled me into poverty before. Uh, not that I'm not still there, but, you know, I've been there. I, I've wrestled with it. So, so that that's actually something I'm working on right now. Um, and uh, I'm hoping that that launching my channel is going to help. But um, yeah, now right now I'm uninsured and it's over a thousand dollars in medical necessities every month. Um, so it's 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 rough. It's rough. But um, you know, he, so taking this into a better direction. Um, I'm I'm, I'm going to use this soapbox for two seconds. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. One of the biggest misconceptions that I really want to try and fix that I want to talk about, and I'm going to talk about it ad nauseum until people fucking get it. And that is your mental health is unique to you. And what is normal for you is not always going to be normal for other people. And that is okay. You don't need to live up to someone else's normal because you can't. The fact is you find where your normal is. And from there, you live the best possible life that you can, given what you have. I mean, 
it, it's 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 a silent thing, but you wouldn't say you know it to somebody who is missing a leg, right? You 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 wouldn't say, well, just get over it. Um, but at the same time, you know, you wouldn't say, oh, well, I'm not going to give you a prosthetic. I'm not going to give you crutches or a wheelchair because you might get addicted to it. No. But also a prosthetic or crutches or a wheelchair is not a fucking replacement. They didn't grow your leg back. Just because you're on medication doesn't mean that everything is all of a sudden better. And there's this horrible feeling. And, 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 and it happens to everyone I've talked to. They're like, oh, I finally, I'm, I'm finally on medication. And then a month later, they're like, it's obviously not working because I'm not better. Well, no. Yeah, you're not. You're not going to be. You're not going to suddenly, through medication, be like everybody else on the planet. No, and 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 the fact is, everyone else on the planet isn't like that either. But it's not going to solve your problems. It's going to help you cope. It's going to be that prosthetic so that you can go out into the world and live live the best life that you can, given what you have. Not 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 this 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 pseudo. You know, I need to live this perfect life and this perfect world, and and I'm going to have all of these opportunities. No, sometimes. I, you're stuck. For me, it's depression. I have clinical depression. It's it's a chemical thing, and there's not a day that goes by that I don't think about suicide. And I recognize that is my illness. I recognize that is my illness, and I'm going to continue to fight it because I know it is. Um, but it that's doesn't matter who you something, are. That's something that when we met, I was hugely appreciative of you about the how open you are about that. Uh, also, hi, I'm back. Um, but Welcome that, back, Ocean. That a I, meme was posted I came in while and I was just gone. like, "Oh, uh, what? What happened? I got turned into a here. cat girl." Yes, that, w- that wasn't the only thing that happened. What is the other thing? Uh, the other thing is apparently uh, a Rule oh, 63 no. version of my character looking at the steak with straws and light bulbs in it. For anybody who's aware of how what happened on Fox News, <sighs> offering me a Buzz Lightyear action figure, saying, "Father." <laughs> A plug. <laughs> yes. Those okay. are incandescent bulbs, right? Obviously. <laughs> That's beautiful. Uh, God, what a weird world. Um, Father. Yeah, plug. sorry about that. I had uh, equipment drop off that happened with wound up getting scheduled, having to get scheduled right That's now. That's a so. weird way to say you went to take a shit. You can say that. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it won't help that the uh, um, everybody poops. I'll just I'll just word this and we'll see how it fr- how, how it goes. Is that I got some free low boys out of it? Mm. It's a that's a light stand for anybody who uh, is keeping score. But <clears throat> he's judging you. Yep. <clears throat> um. Yeah. But yeah, the. Uh, to to jump back into into things a little bit because that's there's a something that Eric and I like agreed on extremely uh, like we were very much on the same page uh, about the importance of it, which was um, mental health, the treatment of it, and specifically clergy responsibility regarding it. That if I recall that correctly, right. Yeah, so that was uh, Ocean. I, I, your point there was that if you are in, if you are in the role of community builder, if you are taking on responsibility and gathering groups of people to have this well-being, you do have a responsibility to them. Yeah, to um, be honest and open and try and help those people live the most healthy lives they can doesn't mean you live it for them yeah but it does mean that um easy things man don't shit where you eat right if you're right. you're responsible for a community that means you're there's probably a power dynamic where you should not be having relationships with people who um could potentially um mistake that and you can make people feel uncomfortable Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I've, I've always had this thing. Anybody who walks into the ACA, it, th- there is no sex organs. Um, you come in and I'm excited to see you. It doesn't matter who you are, how you are, what your age is. And it's always going to be that way because the last thing I'd ever want to do is have somebody feel like they could not come um, because of me. Right. Because I made them feel uncomfortable. 
Um, so th 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 you're right. That was a big but thing. But the, is, is we were that. talking about um, the, what, what I was referencing specifically, it was, there was something yeah. that we, we wanted an interview together about as well, which I agree with. You're spot on. But, like, but the clergy responsibility with respect to uh, identifying mental health and what to do about it, that as a clergyman, um, that your your expertise does not automatic you getting becoming clergy does not come with an expertise in mental health. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, it um, shouldn't even doesn't. come with a position on mental um, health. Right. Well, so the. Uh, so I, I want to I want to be clear. I, I wanted to first clarify that the definition that you gave of clergy. Yeah, because there we person. did have that conversation where it was like because I our kind of clergy. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot baked in there that mm -hmm. I disagree with, that I wouldn't do. Um, right. But I think that if we were to flesh them out, you and I would probably agree on most of those things. Like where those, yeah, exactly. Because it's, if but you I'm define clergy as like a community caretaker. Yes. Then, you know, absolutely. then, yeah. But then community that, that's, caretakers, I agree, are not marriage counselors. Right. They're also not uh, trained therapists. Right. Um they're not doctors, so don't treat them like, like that. Get actual professional fucking help. Right. Yeah. And like you you can't have as a pastor, you can't prescribe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well and and, uh, and and if you're a licensed therapist and a pastor, you should know better than to prescribe. Uh in in a uh I don't know, church therapy set. That doesn't make sense, you know what I mean? Like getting a prescription from your past. I don't know if there's a situation where that has happened. I'm sure that it has at some point, but sure. um, like that now I'm concerned that that's happened. Okay. Uh, While but, we're talking, just yeah. I'm to make an adjustment to my camera because I can see that it's slightly cockeyed. Uh, you can see it in the, the thing behind me. And oh, look at you. Okay. You're driving, driving oh, you nuts. Absolutely. So I'm listening. <laughs> I need to do this. I need to do this or I'm not going to make right. it stream. Got it. Do it. Do it. Okay. Do it. Go. 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 And he's doing his best, guys. He's doing it. He's doing he's it. Still, there's still not enough fan art to cover his face, so like he's still well framed in the fan art. There we go. All right. So that's good. So, uh, but the thing, the thing that we that we were talking about, like really, like because uh, we were talking about how there was there was a guy that we bumped into. That I bumped into while at the ACA that was talking about how his church dealt with his mental health and that they decided to try and pray it away. And that that was, that was their solution to it was to be like, you know, and for me, it was like, we were talking about that prosthetic, like that, you know, there is a, there is a medical empirical route for this issue and your the church is opting to ignore that and go over it with whatever their solution is going to be yeah they they they're doing their people dirty and, yeah and that's that's something that like um in particular i have a giant objection to any clergy that is doing that agreed it's um that is absolutely abuse of your of the community that you're supposed to be the shepherd of from a clergy perspective and for a community, any community leader perspective, even if you're not identifying yourself as clergy, like, um, I, so I, I had to step away from the community building for uh, the last six months or so, um, mm -hmm. just because it, I got eaten alive, man. Um, I was working seven days a week. Um, yeah, you put your, I put a lot of yourself into it. Yeah, eight thirty yeah. a.m. to eleven thirty p.m. Saturday through Sunday, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so mm -hmm. I, I just I I, I, I I lost myself. Um, I'm actually still coming back. I'm still working on healing. Right. So. Um. Because what when we met, you were twenty four seven ACA, like twenty four seven ACA. Mm -hmm. Like and hanging out with you in in Austin, it was like this every day. There's something. Yeah. that you're doing you're you're working on it and you're building it and you're doing like this was what you were pouring your fucking heart and soul into and uh well to the degree i can yeah right um well yeah i guess not having a soul doesn't help 
I, 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 <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> I had I had to lighten the mood somehow, and that seemed like the most opportune yeah, way. Beautiful. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, Demonstrate what a soul is, please. To, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, help me in my first debate. Uh, that 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 wound up being fun. Um, debates are amazing. You know, the, is that the debate that you called me up for that you were the that was the second one it's the second one okay cool that was the second. so um the first debate that i went and did was at roger state university in oklahoma and what's interesting is i've talked to a lot of people who, oh yeah i debate all the time yeah no i go to this website and i debate online all the time and i have all these debates right no it is it's different in person different on a stage well even it's it's not even the same as in person it's okay you're going to stand in front of this audience that's so packed this auditorium this is packed and the lights are on you and you have 20 minutes to fill as you're opening go right and and, and it's this um it's this performance and i didn't expect it to be but there's so much performance involved in debate that it just absolutely blew my mind. It is theatrical. There's elements of it that are absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. When you're, cause yeah. when you're having a debate, you're not just trying to have a presentation of facts that usurps whatever the opponent is trying to bring. You are also an actor on the stage. It's theater. You're, there's a reason why when uh, people like Matt Powell get brought up as being dangerous in a debate, even though they can't bring facts to the table and they can't bring it to bear, what he can bring is charisma. That's like the Can one, the one tool, the one tool that he has is that, and that's per, in many cases that's the most useful tool you can bring. Because if you can get people to like you, I'm not saying that this is a thing that you do, Eric, but <laughs> if you can get people to like you, they will excuse the stupid shit that you say. But uh, who, wait, who did you reference directly on that one? Is that I'm that referencing? Good? I'll type it to you. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, but oh, I think I know who you're thinking of. Yeah, I, I I agree, and it's interesting being an atheist and a skeptic because my community is is made up of the people who are going to call you on your shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like. They're not afraid to. They do. They hop in and they're just like, hey, you really fucked this up. And I, I remember the very first time I saw somebody who was just like, Eric absolutely screwed this up and it was terrible. And I hopped in and I was like, you're right. I totally screwed that up. And immediately they responded, oh, yeah, no. I, I Thank you for being honest. This is the thing that happened with uh, when Nakasuchi didn't perform terribly well in his debate. As soon as that happened, me, Ocean, Shannon Q, and others just all like hopped into a live show with him and went, okay, it's time. it's time for the tough love. Right. It's, ti we it's time like, for the, the list of things you did what happened. wrong. Here's how you can improve. Do better, man. And and sometimes that conversation needs to be had after a debate. It's like, you know, it doesn't matter whether or not you were right. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and, and like that's that's an experience. I think that uh, even if you're not debating in front of an audience, you're going to if you're take if you start taking debate seriously and you start doing entering um, spaces that are competitive around it you're going to be right and lose several times mm -hmm. before you learn this is a thing that you learn if you've i know that you said you're a fan of many fantasy realms eric i'm not sure if you've ever been a fan of like the competitive gaming scene in any way um <laughs> depends on what game um name which one <laughs> um, so th there was a time where I was the second highest warlock on my server in World of Warcraft. Speaking of that, are you getting into classic? Nope. Okay. Well, I'm I'm currently on a 45 warrior in classic. Yeah, I <laughs> don't have the time. Uh, Cirrus, have you seen this new art that came in? I have not seen the new art that came in. Oh, uh, it is it is Fem Eric. I believe that's Fem Eric <laughs> with uh, with tentacles. I yep. want. To see this here, here we are Eric. <laughs> here you are just enjoy no, my, i'm kind of into fem I'm, eric i'm, I'm just I'm, not gonna I'm, lie my cell phone and it's buffering and oh dear sweet jesus <laughs> <laughs> there we are eric, though 
That is That's definitely Femeric. It's wearing a yeah. gray shirt, just like you are. Okay. Yep. Okay. Here we are. And it's got luscious hair. The curls. <laughs> you see the curls? You see, I I'll tell you what I like about it. <laughs> I'm obviously into it. Right? I've got the tongue out. I'm like, oh, like, like. You've got the hego face. You know, that's that's what's important is that you're enjoying it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the side of the Internet, Eric. You're not escaping anymore. Uh, beautiful. You're permanently beautiful. stuck here. Um, But no, the the competitive scene that I was going to relate to. It was it's the reason why the, another reason why we know that it's femme Eric is that it was posted along with the con the comment. He was warned. In the <laughs> <laughs> I As love you it. do. Um, um, but one well, of the things that we're we're used to in like competitive card games, competitive Smash Brothers, um, ooh, World of War, yeah, yeah. Magic the Gathering, sorry, theory crafting. Um, yes, um, there's the world when you've got like the the net decker uh, who has the deck but doesn't understand the theory behind why the deck functions the way that it does. Right. You, they come into the tournament and you go, okay, look, did you come in with all of the right tools? Yes. Were you right to bring this particular deck? Well, yeah, you played mono red, and that's fine. It, it, that just means you're a degenerate. That's okay. Um, but no, you you have the <laughs> you just mono red can be viable. <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying. Hey, there's a reason why red deck wins is a meme. Um, <laughs> but no, the the conversation that I've had in, in several tournaments over years because I've been a competitive gamer in the card game scene for several games. Um, the thing that happens a lot is you get the person who spends the money, gets the deck, but never studies the theory behind it, never looks at any of the championships that that deck performed well in. They have the side deck, but they never dip into it because they don't understand what the side deck is there to counter. So they come in with literally all the right tools, the same way you would in a debate, where you go in with your right, you've got the right facts, you've got everything. But then when they perform abysmally, you have to sit them down and go, okay, look, I understand that you've got all these neat toys now. You did not use any of them well. No. Because they've got the deck and they're just like, I'm going to go ahead and drop my hand out. And you go, couldn't you have been playing on curve instead? And then like consolidated resources by playing on curve? Play tempo, not aggro. You're not the aggressor here. Please stop. <laughs> I mean, I have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> there is nothing, there is nothing superior than, um, you okay, Ocean? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing scarier in Magic than playing somebody who's going, like, is it? And they just end their turn. They just, okay, start my turn. Oh, yeah, n because that just means that they have a handful of instants, and that's it. They're ready. <laughs> yeah, and it's just like, okay, I play a creature. No, you don't. Just so, so for context, Ocean, is it is the is red-blue. Red is a control color, control and aggression color. Those are the colors in Halo. Oh my god! Um, so red is a, red is a red is a I saw color. That series. Red is a color that Caboose controls. Is my favorite character. God damn it! <laughs> it would be ironic if we were all made of iron. <laughs> Freaking! I love that show. I love that show way too much. Um, but no, for the context, red has aggression and control, and blue is control and draw power. Um, so you put those two together, usually you just take the control aspects of red and the draw and control aspects of blue, and you end up making this deck that only has one word in its vocabulary, and that's no. You play purely reflexively to exhaust your opponent. The only <laughs> word in your vocabulary is no. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, I'm, I'm going to talk way over a shit ton of people, but for those of you who understand it, my favorite, my very favorite deck was a self mill deck and I had two win conditions. One of them was um, if you mill out completely, you uh, instead of losing, you win. Mm -hmm. And the other um, was shuffle your discard pile back into your, your, your draw and mill the opponent for, for every card you shuffled back in. Yes, my and, so and my so what I do mm. is I had Mirror Mad Phantasm. Do you remember Mirror Mad Phantasm? I do not. Mirror Mad Phantasm. What you could do is you could uh, uh, use it, and its ability is instead of it dying, it can shuffle itself into your deck, and then you have to mill yourself until it comes out. Oh, so you end up you end up running a one of, and you mill it. 
you mill until you hit it and that gets you set up. No, no, I would run a copy of it. So I'd create a clone and then use its ability. As soon as it touches the deck, it disappears. So I mill my entire deck. It oh, never... so it, be it becomes an instant, an instant yeah. win at that point because the clone can't exist in the deck. My yeah. um, so oh, it, was, it pissed people off because it was like, okay, you do you, whatever. I'm not even going to care about what you're doing. Right Did now. you play during first run Ravnica? Yeah. Okay, so, so uh, I... the block that contained both Ravnica and Time Spiral. I don't think so. Then no. Okay, so there was a there was a Simic deck during that age uh, that was silly. Um, you had I'm sure you're familiar with the card doubling season. Uh, copy enchantment. So you ran doubling season, copy enchantment, and sapperlings. And I, I worked out the math for it. Um, one sapperling. In fact, actually, let me calculator for half a second because I I remember this being stupid. Two times two. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's the number. That's a lovely number. Um, so for every one sapperling you had on board, you created 512 sapperling t uh, 512 sapperling counters. And when you removed three sapperling counters, you created one sapperling token that was one one. So if you divide the 512 per turn per sapperling away. You divide that per, by three, so you're able to spawn 170 tokens. So now you have 170 tokens times 512, because that's what the doubling seasons got you to. Every turn, you summoned 87,381 one one sapperlings. And this was I have a thing. No that, idea what these guys are talking about. <laughs> so, Ocean, for for context, a Magic the Gathering deck contains. Gonna explain it to me. I don't a, know. A Magic the Gathering deck contains 60 cards. Yeah. This is a deck that magically creates a field with 87,000 cards out of a 60-card deck. Get some. That's a lot of yeah. cards. And this is... So whenever we went into tournaments, uh, my opponent would ask me if I was playing Simic because I went to the same local so enough times that it was just understood that I played tokens. My opponent would ask me if I'm playing Simic, and if I said yes, the opponents on either side of me would scoot... <laughs> because that was the that was the amount of table real estate required to realistically play that deck. Uh, guys in the chat, press an H if this is going way or the fuck over your head. Yeah, okay. Let's, <laughs> see, let's see how H... Back in, let's bring it back let's in. Let's see how much H this is. <laughs> if you're following along with this conversation, give me an M for Magic the Gathering. <laughs> Hold on. I, I just, I just want to see what's going on. <laughs> Somebody said they stopped playing me when I did that. Is there someone here from my old life? Oh, dear God. Oh, shit. We got a lot of M's. People are following this conversation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness. My like the, It's, my it's straight up divided. Like I think it's about 50-50 of people just going, what the fuck are they saying? I'm tuning out whatever game I'm playing at the same time as I'm listening to this. I've just gotten more into it. And everybody else is just like, yeah, yeah, that's, 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 that's you know, I totally understand. I've had that experience. I've been the guy that scooted. You know, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of. This is one of the first times this where is, I think age did not Sirens actually audience, win. Guys. This is Sir Ed's audience. Why would I not have an audience of nerds? <laughs> the Eevees have spoken. Yeah. There's a panel of Eevees that we must consult. Yeah, motherfucker. Ask, ask my bona fides. I am a legit geek. <laughs> that, that means the next time that I'm in Texas, Eric, you and I need to play some card games. Oh, dude. Because remember, when you played Matt Dillahunty, I was the one that handed you a random... Uh, <laughs> I was the one that handed you a random card mat. I was just like, no, it's a sin to play without a card mat. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, absolutely. Cirrus took me oh, to... Uh, play Keyforge. You have to check out Keyforge, dude. That's the one that uh, you and Matt were playing, right? Mm -hmm. Cirrus took me to a card shop um, some time ago. It's like one of the one of the... Uh, first few times that we hung out and proceeded to teach me how to play a game and destroy me. Oh, yeah, because I taught you how to play Weiss. I taught you how to play Weiss. You gotta get yes. Weiss yeah. is... I loved it. it Weiss was is fun. interesting. It was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, I played 
uh, the deck with the name of the anime who's that I forgot. That's like the you were playing melancholy, melancholy of uh, Haruhi. Of, yeah, Haruhi Susumiya. I don't. I, these names don't. I don't remember them, but I remember I was like, this is the uh, show that I watched and loved, and then it came into that endless eight, and I lost track. Um, but uh, the deck was fun, and that game was a that game was great. <laughs> yeah, and I and I came in playing Vocaloids and Madoka Magica. No idea what those are. The one of the reasons why I chose uh, Melancholy was it was the only anime in the decks that I recognized and had any clue what was. Um, Another art of the was rest just of submitted for you, by the way, Eric. What was going on? Uh-oh. Really? Let's, let's, there let's see. There are a couple see. things that have happened in the live chat that I'm really, really excited about. What's going on in the live chat? <laughs> <gasps> oh. Oh, my. <laughs> you were warned. But I'm enjoying it, so I'm okay with it. As long as I'm enjoying, <laughs> that's that's where I draw the line. Okay, that's what. Okay, there are some big things that happened in the live chat that I've got to shout out here. Go ahead, okay, go so. for it. Do it. Okay, cat nerd says, "Yo, I'm late, but I want to scream that a cute guy asked me out." Cat nerd, David, fuck yeah, good job, rock on. And There's then the also other... a, another one for you, Eric. Just so you're aware, and, and King of Monsters. Uh, actually super chatted and said the heathen crew stands with you ocean the heathen crew is my core is is, is, is. so uh my base is i'm stealing uh, your fans one by one <laughs> <laughs> that's uh if 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 you uh join me on twitch every saturday or that's uh, right heathen and support what i do check out my new channel you are part of the heathen crew so this i love this fan art first off the uh the oh the no, oh no. <laughs> um <laughs> second uh i went on twitch with eric a little while ago and that was a boatload of fun uh i helped <laughs> i believe uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> i feel as though there's a butt coming i helped so much <laughs> okay, so I was planning on actually recording that and keeping that up, and I forgot yep. to record, but somebody actually clipped that. Yep, so, the, that actual yeah. moment. Yeah, so we played Human Fall Flat, where you actually have to work together, and there was a moment where I was hanging from, I was hanging from this bar, and I was like, Ocean, please help me. You can reach out and grab me and pull me back to safety. Oh, he gave no instruction. Don't give me this. I said, please so, help me. And, so instead, <laughs> and I said, I can help. Yeah, I can help. Motherfucker runs and jumps and bear hugs. So now he's hanging from me. <laughs> oh, so you did the, uh, you did the I'm helping. I'm helping. And I'm just like. You're the type of guy who ruins <laughs> all of my League of Legends games. <laughs> I was helping. I don't know what you're talking about. I went to him and it was it was emotional support. You're the no. Ocean, you're the type of guy who if I'm playing a stealthing class in an RPG and I'm hiding somewhere, you're standing right the fuck on top of me going, "Hey, Shoot. I'm helping. I'm right here with you." And I'm just like, "I'm stealth, you Nimrod." <laughs> Stop it. You might be right. I I um <laughs> when it, in multiplayer games i am often that guy um that is like yes i will do the thing uh Zanji nobody asked said you to you do are, the thing you are ocean uh, leroy jenkins keltoy <laughs> <laughs> yep uh leroy. that's yeah. not that's not entirely wrong <laughs> Dylan asked something in the chat I, randomly. In Destiny, I die regularly from going Leroy Jenkins, and, like, Leroy Jenkins into a room. Like, so, that's, that's what happens. Also, Eric, do you play Destiny 2? Uh, so I played a shit ton of Destiny 1. Um, you should get Destiny 2. It's free to play now. Anyway, what, sir, okay. what were you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> um, Dylan said in the chat, uh, what kind of D&D class would your persona be? I was thinking Paladin with Monk Multiclass because I want to do a D&D type drawing. So um, just so you know, my favorite class to play in D&D is Paladin. But be warned, when I play Paladin in D&D, I play very lawful stupid. Fuck you. 
You're that guy. I you? Okay, in my current campaign, I have literally made Xanathar have an eye trained on me forever, and it is trained on my family so that if I have any potential offspring, he'll know when they fuck up too. You're that guy. Yeah. What were you going to say about Destiny, Eric? I'm sorry. I, I no, realized oh, I railroaded this is, this you. Is, this is far more important. Okay. <laughs> self-righteous paladin. The, the racist self-righteous paladin. You. My hey, mine's not actually racist. My look, I okay. okay so I'm willing. I'm I'm gonna oh. find. I'm gonna find my character. I'm not sheet. racist. I just play one on no, D and D. Hold on, hold on. What what race is your paladin? My my paladin's dragonborn. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Which means a lot of racism gets levied against my paladin, hmm. not necessarily the other way around. Um, okay. So you're a paladin that speaks truth to power. Okay. Row <laughs> row. So how the does power. Dragonborn feel about people who are, are partially celestial? My Dragonborn has no problem with them unless they speak ill of my god. If they speak yeah. ill of my god, my, my, my Dragonborn has a problem and will probably commit suicide in a desperate attempt to stop them. Because so blasphemy is bad. I played a paladin uh, that... So the D&D game that I was playing got a little absurd. Um, I played a paladin named Horik who at the beginning of the game was a paladin that was anti-necromancer and uh, was very, is, is a worship, follower of the goddess of death, Wee Jass. And um, he, was, he, was, he was an edgelord, serious, serious guy character. At some point, I had to take a break from the game for a little while because I was traveling and then I came back. And we decided, we tried to come up with like a backstory for what the fuck was going on with my character. Turns out that he got teleported to North Georgia um, and <laughs> <laughs> spent a long amount of time there because time travels differently when you're on Earth and d d world than over here. So it seemed like I was gone for a shorter period of time than I actually was. Enough that my character picked up an accent and built a portal out of pickup trucks in order to get back into the uh, de de uh, the, the that world, right? And in that period of time, managed to convert to Christianity, kind this, of. This sounds and, like the plot of the Savage Time. <laughs> so I wound up driving a pickup truck through the portal and brought a pickup truck with me into the <laughs> into the world. And so now I'm riding around and I'm just like, "Howdy, y'all! I am a." Uh, <clears throat> I've been outside of the, uh, the this world, this dimension for a long time, and I went to this old weird place, and I don't know. I I, I found a, an undying love for the Chevy, though. I'll tell you what, and um, so I just started driving around because I, you know, this is a V8 pickup, and uh, gasoline it, it exists into, in this world. There were points where my character got into conversations with gods in the D and D universe. And he would start like denying that they were there because he's a Christian now. He'd be like, I don't know what this is. Uh, this is a, um, <laughs> this is just different. I'm, th th you're not, you're not Jesus Christ. Are you the, <laughs> are you the Satan? <laughs> Tell me, are I'm you not the Satan? I'm having a conversation with this demonic being. I don't know what it is. So, you know, this was a, uh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> But we, it, the, the game amazing. went off the rails at that point just because my character kept doing weird short, weird shit. And I wound up being able to Leroy Jenkins my way through a D&D game. Um, so uh, with or without chainsaw arm, no chainsaw arm, um, but with an affinity for hammers. <laughs> of um, course. Because, like, you know, when, when you have a hammer the size of what my character had, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, didn't matter what it was. It, the solution for it was hit it with the hammer. <laughs> so, uh, Eric, we have another cat girl version of you that just came out. It's hammer time. Okay. Here you I, are. I think one of the most fun times I ever had was... Um... Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> Wait, I haven't seen this. Huh. What how is happening? Is he's having. He's oh my having... goodness! But how is it me? The glasses. Is it the glasses? The glasses. It's definitely the glasses. glasses. And again, I guess the luscious hair. You've been animated as well, far yeah. as your hair goes. It needs to be a little bit more curly. They've got some locks there, but <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Oh, oh my. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay. There you go, Eric. This has been a, this has been a wonderful time so far. So, <laughs> I was going to say it was some of the most fun that, I, that I've had playing RPGs. Um, let's see. Gamma World. Have either of you played Gamma World? Find it. Play Gamma it. World. It's amazing. It's out of print. It's been out of print for a long time. But it's all random tables. You want to build a character, you've got to roll your dice, and your your character is absolutely randomly generated. And it's amazing. It's post-apocalyptic. Everything is mutations. And I rolled a plasticine character with, like, no health who was psychic. And so I was a sentient balloon. <laughs> <laughs> It was amazing. I carried a Sharpie at the end of my string. And so, like, if I was angry and I needed to put on my game face, I just, like, er, er, er. <laughs> and, and it was phenomenal. And I would just kind of float and be the scout. But, uh, you know, all of, the, all of the loot is randomly generated. And so something popped off the loot table, and it was this amazing helmet, and everybody's fighting over it. And I'm just like, fuck you. I'm getting the helmet. <laughs> As a sentient yeah. balloon. <laughs> so, yeah. And so just this kind of floating helmet. <laughs> <laughs> just indestructible. <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. Pins and needles can't fuck with me. <laughs> no. when so, so, wait, is this, when, is, is this when somebody, when, when somebody has a, uh, a leg falls asleep in this universe and they have to shake it awake and you're just like, what's the feeling like? Like pins and needles and then your, your character just goes... <gasps> <laughs> no i don't want to feel that feeling ever <laughs> puts on helmet floats yeah. away <laughs> it was amazing dude <laughs> uh but other than that let's see favorite characters uh you, you probably would not be surprised um but uh there was one time when i got tired of building blenders and so i decided i was gonna roll a golden tongue or silver tongue character and so i had zero martial prowess and I put everything into charisma and um, coming from royalty or some something thereof. And I loved the idea of being having to talk myself out of whatever situation was happening and the amazing things that happen when you do that. You know, the, the role playing aspect is always, for me, the most fun. So. Uh, it's it's, it's definitely an element of fun for me as well. <laughs> um, there's like this the things that you can that you can play with uh, especially like and playing the game absurdly as well if you're going to do it do it in a way this is just like you know if you're going to start because I fuck around in RPGs and like in uh, whether or not I'm playing with people by myself whatever um, like in a video game whatever I'm going to find ways to do something that's a little weird and, um, but if you're going to do that, do it in a way where other people can enjoy what you're doing and not to be annoying as shit. <laughs> to, so, so funny, funny, if we're, if we're talking about uh, tabletop RPG stories. So I have, I have a friend who <laughs> did not, uh, did not know that that's how you had to go about, if you're going to be a shit Lord, like if you're be, going to do it, be a shit Lord that does not. So I, I, I have a friend who played a bar, the fucking game, right? You know, you just, Yeah. I, so I had a friend who played a bard, and his favorite spell was Vicious Mockery. To the point where, in situations where it was inopportune to use Vicious Mockery, and when the last ten turns had shown that casting it over and over again had been ineffectual, he still would cast only Vicious Mockery. Um, as a result, our entire group uh, ended up wiping because a situation that he could have prevented by simply stabbing a spider... He instead used every turn casting Vicious Mockery, and the spider proceeded to maul and poison and murder everybody around him. And then we finally uh, yelled and screamed enough for him to realize that casting Vicious Mockery was not the correct thing to do. Magically got all of his rolls as high-level rolls uh, for stabbing randomly with his sword. He managed to boringly hack and slash his way through the spiders and then was depressed the rest of the time because we, we weren't having fun, our characters randomly dying because of his existence. Right. Like, it, it can't... Don't do it in a way that gets everybody fucking killed. Um, do it in a way that maybe frustrates the DM a little. 
Yeah, if there's anybody, <laughs> so yeah, realistically, <laughs> you're pl- you're always playing against the DM. You're not playing yeah. against yeah. your group. Piss yeah. off your DM. Frustrate DM, your DM. If the if your team is laughing and your DM is giving you looks, you're doing it right. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and well, because if you DM, coming from the DM side, our job is to kill you. Yes. <laughs> The DM, the DM's job is to kill. The DM's job is not to tell a story. The DM's job is not to make an engaging experience. No, the DM's job is to murder you. Everything else comes second. Everything else comes second to the job of murdering your face. <laughs> oh, these are my people. <laughs> I'm home. The second time surrounded by uh surrounded by fan art of you with tits and tentacles I, this is have you have you enjoyed your time on hammered out eric <laughs> I, oh. <sighs> yeah, good. this is good there's absolutely nothing in here that's clippable that could destroy my career <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> So, I guess should we start winding down? I think that we're I think we so. have I think I think we're around that point. We're around yeah. that point. I'm also about to spam Twitter with a, an image of Eric that is priceless. Oh, great. <laughs> that's the just an image of him <laughs> slink back in his chair and like just like with surrounded by cat girl in <laughs> tentacle versions oh. of himself. This like, is a, this is an image that will I would just check Twitter. You'll you'll see it. Oh, <laughs> somebody's going to call in to talk heathen and say, "I saw a picture on Twitter." Mm-hmm. I thought you were an intellectual. <laughs> <laughs> so before we you'll be like, yes. Too much. Uh, would you mind if I hoard myself out? Just yes. Oh, this by is, all this means. is the what we what we're doing as far as winding down. I want to give you the last word. Plugs. Go for your. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All go right. Pour yourself, pour yourself you? out. Who rub have we your been nipples. talking to? Where can we find you? And then we will get into super chats. And you and this is one thing that I want to introduce. There is Talk Heathen. People can obviously find you in Talk Heathen, but you are starting a YouTube channel as well. Yes. Tell us the fuck about it. All right. Go for it. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah. This is the first YouTube endeavor that I'm doing that I'm actually owning and having, and it is just mine. And I'm really fucking excited about it. When I did not have a channel, um, Matt was Matt Delhunty was nice enough to put my debates on his channel. Um, now that I have my own, they will be going onto my channel. Um, I do really love doing the live debates, and so I, dude, it costs serious money to go go. Like the last time I went out to a to, to a thing, it cost like a thousand bucks out of pocket. Right. Um, so going and doing that, right? Going out and, and actually. Um, reviewing and, and doing all of the debates i want that to be my full-time job um so i'm i want i want to start touring again um i'll be posting debates i'm also going to be having long sit down discussions with believers mm-hmm. um so ocean you are actually invited um i do want to sit down and have a deep philosophical conversation with you because you know i want to get into the epistemic differences that you and i have yep. uh, because i think you're wrong <laughs> And um, I, I, I recently recorded an interview with Dean Meadows, who's actually an, a Christian apologist. Um, and I'm going to be having those sit downs. So it's more of what people are used to when it comes to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to see me eventually live, but definitely uncut and definitely unscripted. Having those conversations and doing it in a way that is interesting, exciting and helpful. Um, so debates, conversations, and, um, we're going to kind of see where it goes. But the big thing is, is, uh, instead of talk heathen, instead of the atheist podcast, um, I decided, no, I'm, I'm going to own this. It's going to be Eric Murphy. So if you go to youtube.com slash Eric D Murphy, you're going to see two videos. One is an intro to the channel and the other is part two to a debate review that I did with Matt. I'm currently working on editing the next video. It's hopefully going to come up in the next day or two. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really, really excited. So please check out youtube.com slash Eric D. Murphy. You can check out the show that I'm on, Talk Heathen. It's on every Sunday at 1 p.m. Central. It's a product of the atheist community of Austin. Um, 
I also do. I also have a Twitch stream. So if you want to go to twitch.tv slash Eric the Heathen, every Saturday I play video games and I want to start bringing more friends in. Um, and it's fun. We just sit back, hang out, and have a good yeah. afternoon. You're always welcome to come and join us. We have somebody who has super chatted in response to that. Eric, will you cosplay as your cat girl persona slash as personas on Talk Heathen? No. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween's coming up. Wouldn't that be awfully spooky? <laughs> Just <No>. cat ears. <laughs> <laughs> so that said, we do have to get we do have to run through the super chats now. Yes, let's okay, go for so it. We have two dollars from Contra uh, Cartoon Contrarian. How many butt plugs? What have I walked into? <laughs> we have. A, you know damn well what you walked into. <laughs> <laughs> you only walked into the butt plug if you walked backwards. <laughs> um, we have from uh, Jonathan Friedel, $5 at Cartoon Contrarian, uh, walked into or backed into. Wait, Jonathan's in this chat? Apparently so. Dude! Long time no talk, man. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Ryla for $2. Uh, happy mousing. Love you, Ray. We have Kenshin. Four ninety one for one ninety nine. Would Hamish be a good voice for Darth Bane? Uh, Hello, Hello, Ocean. Oh, God. That, that actually, good. so that's actually very close to the voice that the audiobook does uh, uses for Darth Bane. <laughs> really? Yeah. The is Darth Bane like Irish or something? Like or Scott? I think so. When he was saying that Hamish is Scottish in the chat. So the the person who. Um, the person who voices that particular uh, audiobook from Random House Audio uh, is British, if I remember. Mm -hmm. um, so when he does Darth Bane, he does pull a little bit of that in. Um, very. No, they are more uh, useful alive than dead. <laughs> it is oh, better. Well. To, it is better to leave thieves that spread lies than to leave corpses everywhere. It <laughs> um, sounds like Deckard Cain. I unexplicably have a shotgun in the Diablo universe. I'm the only one <laughs> that has a firearm in all of these games, and I don't I don't know where I got it. Oh my gosh, now I can't Just stay a while it. and listen. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Well, that's like a that's like a spot on Deckard Kane. Yeah, that, <laughs> like, that's pretty good. That's pretty yeah. good. Start talking about like things say, from the Say anyway. Say I, stay a while and listen. Stay stay a while and listen. No, God no, I, I can't. Say, Stay a while and listen. I'll, I'll have to actually... There's like three commas before while and listen. <laughs> <laughs> I need to actually uh, sit down and play through Diablo 3 again uh, so I can I can work on my Deckard Kane. It, it's been a long time since oh. I've had a chance to work on it. Um, I do know that my, my Alex Jones is on the point. The Haradrum! <laughs> the Haradrum! <laughs> Did you know about the Haradrum? A, a <laughs> thing came from the sky. I think that it was an angel. Maybe. <sighs> Let me go on for five, seven pages <laughs> about the Haradrum. <laughs> Click. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna, so funny. Funny thing. Uh, speaking of impersonations, um, there is a leftist YouTuber uh, named Gutain, and they had a multi-day charity stream uh, that ultimately raised four hundred or uh, ultimately raised forty-four thousand dollars for the Trevor Project. I can personally say that I'm responsible for 3,000 of that because I came in to lend my Alex Jones impersonation uh, to their uh, <laughs> to a reading of uh, Smut and reading the narrative voice in Alex Jones's voice. Uh, somebody donated $3,000 during the course of that, so I can I can claim personal responsibility. My Alex Jones voice is apparently worth $3,000. That is amazing. Um. Speaking of voices and things that need to continue, Super Chats. Uh, Laliette for $5 says, I was forced to go to my pastor instead of a therapist. It took me years to get the help that I needed in reference to the middle-of-the-road conversation we had Fuck. during this. So glad that you're you're here and you got out. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, <sighs> that was a, a, hard, a hard one after all of the laughter. Uh, then we had King of Monsters for nine ninety nine. The Heathen Crew stands with you, Ocean, which we addressed earlier. Um, Did we though? No. <laughs> Neil the six hundred four atheist for ten dollars. I miss hanging with you guys. Well then, Neil, you need to. We still need to have that duel at some point. Uh, Laliet for two dollars says I'm not racist. Uh, I have goblin friends. I swear. Uh huh. <laughs> I have goblin friends, but they're in a cave that you don't know about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, 
I have some dwarven friends, you know, then and 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 some fae friends. They're uh, underground. You wouldn't know them. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Kenshin's four ninety nine. Eric, will you cosplay as your cat girl persona on Talk Heathen, which you already answered? But I'm going to pre- peer pressure you uh, into answering differently. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so what I'm kind of going for in this movement is filling the role of, you know, uh, uh, debates, writing books, that kind of stuff. Cosplay right. as a cat girl, I don't know if I can do. I think uh, I think I think that would both. make you very relatable to a particular part of this crowd. I think, I think you can do both. And, <laughs> what's up mm-hmm. oh I just said that. I, I said I think that's off brand oh. uh, <laughs> I, I think por- it's I think it's 200% on brand por, por que no los dos <laughs> I, I started so off brand you want to talk about off brand my avatar began as part of a hearthstone channel that I ultimately never uh, succeeded with um, yep. that's why my character looks like thrall it's it's very on purpose um so I had a Hearthstone channel. I ultimately ended up not pursuing that channel because I, I found that I have a love-hate relationship with Hearthstone. And when you fall in and out of love with a project, it's very hard to maintain a YouTube channel about that. Um, right. So, but... I, I hate to be that guy, but you, you're good. Thrall's an orc. I, I know Thrall's an orc. I'm aware. I stole his robes. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not only is Thrall an orc, Thrall is a theist. So <laughs> that's true, isn't it? It is true. Yeah. Well, it, it, you would be correct in that universe. To be. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sorry, go ahead. I will never forgive Thrall for stealing the Deathwing kill from us. That's no, I'm I'm still not happy about that. Um, anywho, he also stole Garrosh from us. The fucking punk. Anywho, that all said. Drew Garrosh, are you kidding me? Oh my gosh. No. Mm-mm. I mean, he, he stole the Garrosh kill from us. We oh. never got a chance to kill Garrosh because he killed Garrosh. There we go, yeah, okay. I swear to God, if he kills Sylvanas, I'm gonna I'm gonna be I'm gonna write a very stern letter to Chris Metzen. <laughs> Did, but but his story is strongly wrong. worded. His story, I mean, I mean Okay, yeah. Eric, I, I have almost every Warcraft book ever written. I'm very familiar with his story. Oh. Okay. I'm I'm that kind of Warcraft nerd. Oh. He knows the talk. lore. We're gonna talk. We're gonna we're gonna talk? Oh yeah. Are we gonna have a are we gonna have a conversation along the lines of Garrosh did nothing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna fangirl with you, but never mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. F- wrong. I'm perfectly fine with that fangirling. By the way, if you're a Warcraft fan in the chat, uh, if you stand with Sylvanas, please unsubscribe. That's my that's my take right now. I, I'm not a fan of genocidal maniacs, and she is currently filling that role quite handedly. I I I don't like what they did with the dragons. Oh, you mean stripping them of all of their power? Mm-hmm. And now they are no longer aspects. Uh, the 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 fact that they could strip aspects away from that thing that they represented, and you know um, what you know what's worse? Did you know what happened to Ysera? Um, did the that, mother fucking die? Ysera's dead oh. because because their powers were stripped away. She fell to corruption. Oh no no that's that, I'm sorry I was thinking Alex Straza. No, Alex Straza is alive. Alex Straza is good. Hey, hold on, hold on. The the one who dreams the Emerald Dream. Yes. Is dead. Isera's so, dead. So are are druids just gone now? Druids are still so the Emerald Dream still exists. Fuck you. No, it exists in Yis, from Ysera. Okay, no. It? You know what? Never <laughs> going back to Warcraft. No. <laughs> no. That's that that's that that, no. no. Also, Sylvan- Next stream, Eric and Surus are also about, well. also Sylvanas uh, was leader of the horde up until just a few days ago. Um, just a few days ago, she ended up getting challenged to a Mokgara by Verox Sourfang. Hmm. Okay. A- and in winning, she lost her title. 
Yeah, I'm 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 all lost. Sorry, <laughs> it's, man. It's nerd rage. Um, Sorry, but no, man. if you if you want if you want to have a, a Warcraft lore fangirl session with me at some point, I am 100 percent okay with that. I have a Twitch that I do gaming streams on as well. So. Oh really? Yes. So while I am streaming Warcraft Classic, if you ever want to hop in and want to do some some fangirling, some debating on Warcraft lore and uh, who's justified and what actions they took. So I would, for me to play again, I'd have to get back on my old server because my warlock still has, unless unless it's got patched out, still has the bell, the lodestone, and the candles um, from the original Dreadsteed summoning ritual. So... Uh, you probably still have the items themselves, though they are probably inert now, because Dire Maul has been changed. Um, though, I though I don't personally play retail, I play on their classic server, um, because I'm while I am still a fan of the lore and still follow the lore for Warcraft very closely, I do not like the way the game has changed mechanically. Blizzard homogenized all the classes, um, and that's a thing that I couldn't really get behind. Um, so now I am playing on Classic, where, as broken as they are, classes at least have an identity in Vanilla WoW. Oh, yeah. Dude, I remember spending days at Arathi Islands just chilling so that I could go and, and, and PvP. You know, yeah. When you actually had to go to the place, yeah. Yeah, and that's I've, I've actually been spending the last two days in Arathi Highlands uh, every hour uh, because I'm currently farming for my Mount Gold. So yeah, no, I'm I'm very yeah. well acquainted. So oh, yeah. if you if you want to hop on my Twitch channel at any point and have a, a back and forth on Warcraft, a okay, perfectly fine so, with me. So long as you hop on my stream as well. Oh, oh wait, it's October, isn't it? Yes, it's spook time. I'm doing scary games all, all month. I I'm 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 gonna play PT. Have you played the recent uh, remake of Resident Evil Two yet? If you are if you're gonna do scary oh, you games, you, oh, you need should. to. It is. It is phenomenal. It is eight hours of fuck. It is like fuck. Like like they like they fuck. got like the atmosphere is good. The story like it's if there is ever a remake that I think could function as a replacement to the original, the Resident Evil Two remake functionally does that quite yeah, well. Those are those are big shoes. That's yeah. It fills so, some big fucking shoes. If you want to see Eric uh, shit himself on Saturday. Um, Okay, I'll do it. Sounds like fun. Also, Dylan just asked me, was I around for Corrupted Plague? I was there when Zolgareb was new. I was there for the Corrupted Blood incident. I remember being... Zerus has seen some shit. I remember being one of the players in Ironforge that thought that Corrupted Blood was an event and not a bug. I remember. I was there. The corpses were everywhere. I came skulls for the skull right time. around that point. The thing is, I wasn't super into it. My brothers were into it. And so I really didn't start diving in until AQ started. Um, okay. And, and then when, when, when AQ released, you know, long, you know, before Burning Crusade, that's when I started my character. And so I was still running through all of the beginner stuff. So you didn't spend a lot of time in the major cities the way that the players who constantly died did. No, no. In fact, I, I spent I spent a number of years just leveling up because I had friends that I was just like, hey, what do you want to do this weekend? Let's go fishing. Okay. I'd show up at their house with my laptop. We'd get up early in the morning, crack a beer, and go fishing in-game. <laughs> and spend the day that, fishing. That is, a, that is a way to earn a lot of money in that game. I will say this, though. It's fucking beautiful. <laughs> if if oh, I oh, could oh. ever make a case to convince had, you to hop into Classic, uh, a Every Deviant Delight market fucking locked down. Sorry. Jesus fuck. Um, <laughs> so if I if I ever could make a case for you to hop right in, currently the only content that has been released for the game uh, in Classic, because they're, they're treating Classic as if it is a new vanilla release, which means content is releasing at the pace that it released originally. So <laughs> currently, Molten Core and Anixia is all that exists. Like there's as it, obviously every other dungeon exists leading up to it, but raid wise, that's all that exists. Players are still working their way into getting into Molten Core as we speak. Oh, that's wonderful. 
yeah, it's it's a very organic experience. Oh, I love that. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't have time to do anything. I've got so many projects up in the air, but man, you are the devil. <laughs> I am the worst you. person. He's selling you. There was a devil that would fucking. There is there is a uh, a rock star and a mouse in your future. Nope, nope. I've got I've got a channel to launch. I've got touring to do. Um, going to be driving around the country. And wow to play. I've got a book to write. Wow to play. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mm-mm. <laughs> see i'm sitting here i i am not gonna lie half the reason that i produce episodes early now uh, and get them up on patreon is because it allows me to play wow knowing that my work has been completed for the week yep. <laughs> i knew that's what you were doing too it was like if there's a motivator for Suris to get like get all the work done early it's it's that there we go that's the reason why he's comfortably playing twitch see I'm because still... because the work is already done the work is done yeah exactly yeah, I've, I've, I, I, have to, I have to work a regular job now. And, Fair. Um, I I just up, I just upload five days a week. Yeah, you do. You hustle. You yeah. really fucking hustle. He uploads like crazy. I'm yeah. sitting here like, man, a video a week is a lot of work. And he's <laughs> just going, <laughs> ah, here's another one. Here's another one. <laughs> <laughs> to be to be fair, the things that have helped with that is one doing the two live shows a week helps, and yep. uh, having Erin take over the Friday video helps because she's also been needing to work on her channel. That gives her motivation to both help me and get an episode out on my channel as well, right. which is good. Uh, there's one last super chat before we hop out. That is from yep. Brittany Morgan for two dollars. Endless nightmares, effed up, beautiful, and spooky. <laughs> Dig it. All right. With that, that said. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Eric, do you have any final words for anybody here? YouTube.com slash Eric D. Murphy. Check out Talk Heathen. Um, be excellent. And uh, thank you so much for having me on, you guys. I had a lot of fun. Absolutely. I it was fun, fun having you. All right. This was amazing. <laughs> I have also sent you all the fan art that was submitted uh, that is about you into our Facebook chat. So you have all of that on file now. Thank you. <laughs> for whatever you plan on doing with it. I'm sending it to my mom. <laughs> as you do as you do well thank you all for sticking around hope you all have a wonderful day